An apprenticeship is a work-based learning programme designed around the needs of employers that leads to nationally recognised qualifications. You can use apprenticeships to train both new and existing staff of any age and there is funding available. There are many business benefits associated with apprenticeships, ranging from low-cost training to increased staff retention. An apprenticeship is made up of different parts that give learners a range of skills and knowledge. Each component plays a key role in developing a capable, confident and skilled worker. The benefits of the preparing to work elements are it gives apprentices um, a really good idea about what their responsibilities will be in the workplace, recognise that they will have a duty of care, they have responsibilities. So I think in terms of that element it, it's, it's vital um, to prepare the apprentices um, to have an understanding of, of, of what will be expected of them. The preparing to work element provided me with information about social care. It gave me confidence, it helped me understand my job role more. It showed me what was expected of me. It also gives them the opportunity to get an understanding of what social care is all about. Because um, the difficulty that organisations like Woodford has uh, is getting the interest initially. Um, so by being able to provide opportunities for apprentices to come into Woodford, we actually kind of get them hooked in social care. Um, so they, they then get to find out what it's all about. And more often than not tend to enjoy it um, and love what they do. The impact that it's had on service delivery is um, service users uh, receive a good quality standard of care. Um, if the apprentices are aware of their responsibilities, uh, then they can actually deliver to a standard that people who use our service are satisfied with. I recognise that I had a lot of responsibilities and my duty of care. It gave me a good understanding of the role. It informed me that I needed to follow up policies and procedures to keep everybody safe. It's improved my knowledge and I now have a better understanding of how to deliver quality services. What current staff can do is actually support the apprentices to progress within the organisation. So, you know, it's, it's an all-round winner. In an apprenticeship, a diploma um, leads on from the Preparing to Work Award, the Knowledge Award that they do. And actually, the Preparing to Work Award links directly to the mandatory units in a diploma. Our apprentices are trained to support vulnerable people. That's why they come into the health and social care app apprenticeship. And our job as, as assessors to diploma standards is to make sure that those service users and those vulnerable people are cared for in the best way possible using best practice and person-centred values. The learning style, it suits me better doing the apprenticeship because I learn better on the job. So it's easier for me to complete like the assignments, things like that, because you actually learn what you've got to write about at work. So it is a lot better. What we encourage apprentices to do is to complete some candidate reflective accounts, which is them reflecting on the practice that they've given, uh, the care that they've given, or the, the support that they've offered to service users. I found the diploma was very flexible. Um, I picked all my units and then I had an interview for a learning disability day centre and I needed to show them that I had the basic understanding and knowledge of a learning disability. The diploma has that advantage um, because we're talking credits and we're adding credits up it is easier just to slip in another unit to make up the credits rather than stick to you know you've decided in September by next September those will be the, the units that you've done we, we can swap right right up to the to the last minute almost so literally at the last minute I spoke to my assessor and I changed to the learning disability one and because I had that knowledge, it did lead to a job, yeah, so now I have the job in learn disability that I wanted. The services that we assess within, the employers value that. And actually one of the employers, after an interview, um, which she gave one of the apprentices before she offered them the job, actually came back and the feedback was that the value base of that apprentice was brilliant. And that's what we strive for, because after all, the service users are at the heart of the, the, the service that we're giving. I think being an apprentice has like the benefits to being able to question because they expect us to be learning and asking questions so you can question things without coming across 
in the wrong way and they expect you to question things and it also helps them to realise like maybe there is other ways we could be doing this, more up to date things we could be doing. So I definitely think it's like a two way street. The Employment Rights and Responsibilities part of the apprenticeship, I think, is the most important part of it. I think an apprentice needs to know about their employment rights and responsibilities because they need to understand that they've got a duty to their employer um, and also that they're protected under the law and there are certain things that they can expect from that employer. Basically, the section in the apprenticeship of doing the uh, employment rights and responsibility was to have a more deeper understanding of the rules and regulations in around being an employer because obviously Richard went from uh, being a service user to being a boss to be to running a team of people to having the responsibility of paying people to make sure that the router runs on time when the employer decides that they're going to put their personal assistant on an apprenticeship. They see it at first training for their member of staff, so their personal assistant's going to get some qualifications. But actually, as time goes on, they, they feel that they're learning as well. And the feedback that we've had from several personal assistants and their employers is that it's been a learning curve for both of them, and they've both benefited. So although the personal assistants come away with the qualification, the employer feels that they're a better employer by the end. Through me doing the level three, other things have been filtered down through to the rest of the staff and they've had ideas about things and maybe we should be doing this. It's just become more slick as it's gone along and we understand what is required to run this team. The employer is vulnerable in all aspects of employing people. I mean, there's a lot of legislation out there that they may not be aware of. They might have had some guidance over, but I think it's about reinforcing that and looking at how they can um, work with their employee to get exactly what they want, but to make sure that they're meeting their legal um, responsibilities as well. It gives a framework for everyone, not just the, the management or the supervisors or everyone else. It gives you security ultimately and the knowledge the, the knowledge to be able to deal with the problems when they arise transferable skills are vitally important within my job role things to do with communication um, maths is vitally important you don't realize that you're doing it half the time but from doing the maths and english i realized that i was doing it anyway i was doing it daily functional skills is about people being able to problem solve without it being Please answer this question. The communication part of the apprenticeship has given the staff a lot of confidence, um, especially when talking to relatives, GPs, social workers. They feel confident that the information they're giving is actually correct. And um, by doing their English, it also has helped them with the paperwork, which, as we all know, is a very important part of the job as well. Um, we need to pass this information on to the next shift and the next shift. So by people doing their English and realising the importance of communication um, we've benefited greatly. Giving our students confidence um, to enable them to fill in correct documentation for the care planning which is you know legally um, binding as well and we need to make sure that we get it right. We've definitely seen some really good results um, in-house and, and them working on the floor with um, form filling and care planning and you know the, the math side of things. For them personally, I think it's really helped their um, personal growth um, and helped with the confidence. Because everything was in stones and pounds where everything's in kilograms now, so obviously with working on my maths, I can go back now and do it in kilograms. It's benefited in the fact that you don't realise how you would use both skills in your everyday today job, but you do. And if I hadn't done what I've done, then probably I wouldn't be in the position that I am today. I think it's massively improved the, the standard of care that we're now given um, from the training that we've received, from everything, new skills that we're learning all the time. Um, and I think it does make you feel a lot more confident in the care that you're giving is to the highest standard. The benefits of the personal learning and thinking elements of the apprenticeship enables the apprentices to think for themselves, to make decisions and to follow their instincts, trust their judgments um, because the sector that we're in occasionally um, needs somebody to respond quickly. 
um, and I think the, uh, that element of the apprenticeship uh, encourages and supports individuals to to be confident in decision making. We do always encourage our carers to reflect. It's always been quite a big a big thing in training. So certainly in the induction they do reflect in on each subject area that they cover, which very much mirrors the apprenticeship framework for the QCF. I think reflection for the learners um, helps them to look at what they are doing well, what they perhaps could improve on. Um, but to do that themselves so that um, they're actually individually learning. It, it also enables the, the apprentices to, um, to follow their programme of work uh, and uh, be conscious of their time management um, because the last thing that we want to be contributing to is um, you know, individuals um, not having a good work-life balance. Um, so we, we encourage the apprentices to take in all, all, of the, all of the support they can and information from the personal thinking and learning element. Uh, and actually plan around their routers um, so that they, they don't feel as if they're at work all of the time. There's also a unit on uh, personal development within the QCF um, and that looks at um, how people are progressing and developing personally and professionally um, and they get supervisions with the managers to do that and appraisals. In conjunction with learners, you can also specify additional training offering further flexibility to the apprenticeship framework. Some employers we work with choose to incorporate management or mentoring units under this component. The benefits of apprenticeships to employers, apprentices and people who use services are clear. So if you want to find out more about starting or expanding an apprenticeship scheme, please visit www.skillsforcare.org.uk forward slash apprenticeships.